There are a number of unwritten office rules. No microwave use to heat up pungent smelling foods. I stand in front of the pantry room microwave waiting my turn. A 90 second timer is winding down as the aroma of spices dance around the room. Peeking into the microwave's glass door, I see a batch of chicken tandoori over rice with a side of bendy spinning around in circles. It's traditional Afghani cuisine, just like my grandma used to make, Shaw says to cover up the noise made by my grumbling stomach. The scent of tandoori spices just hypnotized me. If you want to eat some of the best home-cooked Afghani and Pakistani foods, come with me to the mosque next week. It's the start of Ramadan, and food is made for anyone and everyone that comes, even our Catholic guests. A coworker walks into our conversation and asks if he's trying to recruit another suicide bomber. Shaw points at my glass food container. Only an infidel would eat this nonsense. Around the office, we spoke the locker room vernacular. We have to be able to take the abuse, and we have to know how to dish it out. I didn't mind being the butt of any joke, because most of the time, it had to do with anything other than my ethnicity. You can't take these insults seriously. It's rare to find employees willing to stay long term, but my group defined the norm. September will mark 11 years together. Shah and our buddies were like a second family. Eight hours each day, five days a week, and up until recently, cubicle walls provided the only barrier between us. I spent more time with these knuckleheads than most Hollywood marriages last. <laughs> and in that time, our friendship blossomed in a deranged way that allowed for countless inappropriate jokes. Boys will be boys. I chimed in and asked, Jihad a good time in Dubai? <laughs> Jihad. Jihad. Did you have? Get it? <laughs> Sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. As a kid, I spoke that chant over and over like a Buddhist prayer. The reality is that words do hurt, and often sli slice sharper than any knife. The joke struck the wrong chord. Shah despised the word jihad, a word that in the aftermath of 9-11 embodied hateful emotions. Shah felt betrayed that I was holding that knife. I can tell myself over and over again that it's all just fun and games, but sometimes crossing the line just gets too personal. But I had forgotten where that line was drawn. As the room cleared, Shaw explained how devastating the joke felt to him. Shaw looked to me as an ally and not an adversary, but I felt confused. The family didn't have cliques or groups, but in time, my jihadi joke had stuck. It went viral. Jihad a second chance to look at my memo? Jihad lunch yet? I felt awful knowing that Shah was tremendously bothered by the word jihad. The damage was done. I had seen similar treatment in elementary school, and I knew the powerful and harmful words that they carry. It's 6 o'clock in the morning, and I'm in the fifth grade. The scent of fried garlic dances into my room. My grandmother is whipping up a traditional Filipino breakfast. Fried eggs, salted dried fish, and garlic fried rice. Do you want the vinegar dipping sauce with some chopped up tomatoes and cucumbers on the side? Asked grandma. With a bright smile on my face, I gladly nod. I scarfed it all down especially the delicious fish heads. I grabbed my box lunch and rushed out to school. Eating traditional Filipino lunches at school put me in a precarious situation. At home, grandma's traditional meals are a few of my favorite things. Anywhere else, I risk social torture. Pork blood pudding, pig ears, chicken feet. My classmates didn't get it. They eat the typical American fare. They barter with each other quite frequently. 
I'll trade you half of my grilled cheese for a couple McNuggets. How about those Cheetos for my ham and cheese sandwich and a squeeze it? The kids with the veggie sticks have no bargaining weight. <laughs> and for fuck's sake, there is no way shrimp head stew or squidge, sauteed squid stood any chance. <laughs> I'd find areas where I could eat my lunch from far judgmental eyes. Bernie, a Filipino classmate, didn't quite think it through. One recess, Bernie began munching on dried fish heads as if they were french fries. He was oblivious to the stares of our classmates, as if they were watching a live Fear Factor episode. These little morsels of fish made every witnessing child squirm. All poor little Bernie wants to do is eat his dried fish and rice in peace. <laughs> but like verbal diarrhea, questions flew. Why are there still eyes on that fish? It still has eyes. Is it alive? Why does it stink so bad? These questions were punctuated with laughter. They could be so mean. Bernie turned to me and asked, this stuff is good, right? I feel terribly bad for Bernie, but I keep my, any opinion to myself and my mouth shut. I did not want to be associated with eating fish heads. Validate Bernie's request, and I risk being associated with this ignorant foreigner. I could be so mean. Bernie didn't react well to the chuckles. His nickname became Fishhead, and he, he, and he began to cry. Kids are fucking cruel. Boys will be boys. I continue to eat these lunches at the other end of the playground, in solitude, by choice. It was a price to pay for some of Grandma's fried pork skin chips. Flash forward. My second family disbanded. Shaw was part of the first wave of layoffs, and after his exit interview, he left abruptly. No goodbyes. Five years later, I put in my resignation. My last week, I boxed up personal items and came across an old department photo. Today's social media platform means past connections are as easily kept. However, everyone had lost contact with him. Not a single Facebook or LinkedIn connection. It was clear we crossed the line. I crossed the line. I wonder what had become of Shaw. My last day at the office, I stood in front of the microwave waiting my turn. A 90 second timer is winding down as the aroma of spices dance around the room. I eat my lunch in my office in solitude by choice. <laughs>